Hey, 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 it's Rebecca, and you're listening to Resilient by Design. In today's episode, we are sharing a candid corner. You guys really loved it when we shared candid corners a little while back, and so we thought, hey, why not? Let's bring it back. It's summer, basically, and it's fun to just hear these candid conversations that I have with my design community and the questions that I get asked and the answers I give. So today's Candid Corner is a special one because we talk a little bit about the economic slowdown and how it can be important to diversify your revenue. We also dive into sourcing. I share my personal experience on things like sourcing art, how to get clients to budget for art so that you're not stuck using HomeSense fines and how you can go about sourcing that and getting clients to sign off. I I share some candid experiences about my own personal client and situations that I've been through, which can be pretty funny. Uh, But then we also talk about the economy. It's not all doom and gloom, but I think it's an important conversation to have. It's about getting prepared. How do you manage your pipeline, track your leads? How can you diversify your revenue? and still have money left over for professional development. That is today's Candid Corner. If you like these Candid Corners, hop on over to the Designer Meetup Facebook group and let me know. I will definitely start doing them again. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy this episode. All right. (laughs) I'm Rebecca Hay, and I've built a successful interior design business by trial and error, podcasts, online courses, and so many freaking books. Over the last decade, I've grown from an insecure student to having false starts to careers, and now I'm finally in the place where I want to be. Throughout my journey, it's been pretty obvious that I'm passionate about business and helping other entrepreneurs do the same. Each week, I'll share tangible takeaways from my own experience and the experiences of other badass women to help you build your confidence and change your business. I promised to talk a little bit about the economy, and I want to get to that a little bit later, but first I want to answer the questions that were submitted previously and the topics that are hot in the group, Um, and then we can talk about the economy, everyone's favorite topic to avoid. Okay, so we had Gabby. Gabby says, finding the right art for clients. What is the best way to approach this without buying original art pieces as that is not in budget? So it's so personal and takes a lot of time. I agree, Gabby. Art is a very personal choice. Here is one way that you could do it. There's lots of ways that you can do, do it when you want to source art for your client. One way is when you're doing the presentation, you highlight the key areas <clears throat> where art is really needed and important. So you could say say there's like a feature wall in a dining room, or maybe it's above the bed or wherever, or above a console or what, whatever the areas are. And you could, in your design phase, <clears throat> pre-select that art and show your clients some options right at the beginning. <clears throat> You're not selecting the art for everything, So it could be that you go to a local gallery and there's art on the wall and you take a picture of it and you put it into your renderings. If you wanna go the original art route and you just invest in a few key original pieces early on, and then you could budget that. Or it could be an online resource for art. You could try a place like Wendover. I was uh, visiting their showroom at um, High Point Market and they've moved to a beautiful new building. It's a really lovely showroom. They have all kinds of art. Um, it's not original, most of it. I don't. They probably have originals as well, but <clears throat> they and you can print it any size on any substrate and do any type of framing at all the different price points. And they have like you name it, like oil on canvas, acrylic, landscapes, photography, mixed media. Like boom, you've got it all: modern, traditional, abstract, everything. And you could place that in the frame that you think would work, pre-price it, put it into your presentation so that if the client's like, yes, it's already locked in and the price is there and you can order it. What happens more often than not, because art is super personal, the client might say, ooh, yeah, okay, I see the need for like a piece of art above that console, but yeah, this this piece isn't really doing it for me. I don't really love black and white photography. 
great. We've opened up the conversation. What do you like? Um, would you like us in revisions to, to select something else? Or why don't you go to Canvas Gallery? Why don't you go to PI Fine Art yourself on your own or go to a local gallery when you're on vacation? These are the parameters. We're looking for about this size. Uh, and let us know what you find. It's one way to do it. <clears throat> Another way to do it is you could simply put in an allowance at the beginning for art. And you could, you know, add up all the areas that you know you want to put pieces. If the this is assuming the client doesn't have anything, I'll get to what happens if the client has art. Um, and you put in an allowance: five thousand, ten thousand, two thousand. I don't know, depending on the size and scope of scale of the project. And you could say we put in an allowance because it's important that we purchase essentially, especially the key uh, art or the key, yeah, art that we want to put, whether it's photograph, painting, what have you. And so that at the end, we are going to bring pieces physically to put into the space that we think could work and you can make the decision if you like it. If so, it's in the budget and we keep it. And in that case, you wanna partner with a local gallery where you could bring pieces on approval or on loan and you can hold them up during the reveal. Um, <clears throat> or another way is you could even, if you wanted to, but if, depending on if you're charging a flat rate or hourly, you could meet the client at a few galleries to make some decisions and make a selection for art. If you are doing that, I highly recommend you go in advance of the client. You would sort of pre-scope the space. One place we've got in Toronto is PI Fine Art. We will go before the client, kind of go through, say, yeah, I think this print would be really good there. What about this piece here? We did this for a condo project a few years ago. It was very successful. The client met us there an hour later. We had scheduled it. We walked them through and we showed them, this is the piece we think this would be really great or something from this collection. And the client was like, oh yeah, I like this collection, but what about that one? We were like, done, perfect, awesome. So we were able to make the selections with the client. You could either bill hourly for that. It could be an out of scope or you could budget that as part of um, the time that you are spending inside your fixed fee design phase or implementation. So that's one way. If the client has art of their own, I love that. I love when a client has already great art. We do a walkthrough on trade day and we point out the ones that we think could really potentially work and keep. And we, we test the waters to see how the client feels about having pieces reframed. How would you feel like it might be nice to update the frame? Sometimes you have to be a little careful because clients can be particular. We did a really great project this past year, a decorating project. We didn't photograph it because it was really like worked a lot of their own pieces. I think it worked out really, really well, but I don't feel that I need it for my portfolio, but it was a beautiful um, decorating project with a great client. We're still doing extra things for them today. Um, and they had an incredible art collection and prints and from their travels, but we did make recommendations on trade day. We brought in an art consultant. We walked through and we made recommendations of maybe this could go here. Like I'm not fully certain yet. We'll see once we design it. But if we did that, it'd be nice to reframe them. And then the client was like, oh, I have all these like photographs by this like famous photographer in a book. We never had them framed. Do you think you could use these? And we were like, um, yes that would be amazing. Uh, and so we got the sizes of all of the different ones. We picked the ones we wanted and we got it priced for framing so we could do that. Um, <clears throat> and then the last option, I guess you could say would be, you just um, ask your clients to trust you and they have a budget and you buy the art. It depends on your clients. Some clients really don't know what they like and most of the time, whatever you put on the wall, they will like. You got to know your client. Okay, I hope that was helpful, Gabby. Let me know. Um, I answered all of the things. If anybody wants to share or comment on art and sourcing it for um, clients, let us know how you do it here. I know there's multiple ways to do it. I think art is a really essential uh, finishing touch to any project, especially decorating. So if you can get pieces that really work with the space, it is going to give you the best end result. But also, inside your tip, <clears throat> if your client's like, nope, I don't want to spend money on art, or nope, I insist on this ugly ass piece of art because I've had it for 20 years and law is sentimental, I need it here, whatever. Don't sweat it. <clears throat> but if you plan to photograph it, 
because let's let's face it ultimately it's their house ultimately is their home that they're going to live in and so you want them to <clears throat> like it really you can't force them to put something on their walls that they don't like but what you can do is you can <clears throat> you can prop in the right pieces for your photo shoot i have done that so many times <clears throat> there is this one shot that i wish i could share with you right here that was the third floor of a home that we did, which is this whole addition. It's such a beautiful room. We like full reno and decor, beautiful blue grass cloth. If you guys know the project, um, I did a video with House and Home um, walking everyone through the space. Like I love that project. Uh, if you know the project, you know what I mean. There's like this beautiful custom chest of drawers that we had made with like caning details from a few years ago. And I found the perfect art to go above it. It was from PI Fine Art. It was these black feathers on parchment framed the black tied in with the black elements throughout the hardware it was like the scale the size was perfect <clears throat> we didn't hang it because we wanted to reveal to the client and the client was like yeah i don't know i don't yeah we're not gonna buy it and i was like how can you not want to buy this art it's amazing it's fine it's fine we just propped it in for the photo shoot <clears throat> but because we couldn't hang it on the wall not even with a 3m because it was wallpaper grass cloth our photographer mike hayatsky had the brilliant idea he took wait for it a bunch of books and stacked the books on the console table and then we rested the art on top of the books so we could get the shots with the art and then without it and he stitched it together in post-production and so now forever from this day forth that room looks like that art is hanging on the wall and it, it is the finishing touch in my opinion so don't be afraid to fake it to prop in to bring in other other art for photo shoot day don't worry about offending your client you can just tell your client listen like we just <clears throat> you know we want to either respect your privacy and not use your art or we want to um you know it's just gonna help us get that magazine look or whatever most people don't even say anything and most of the time they're not even there for the photo shoot all right <clears throat> that was a lot of time talking about art i didn't know i had so much to say about art uh, okay, what other questions? Um, let me just go through the group here. Vera, if there's anything that has been asked that you want me to touch on, just drop it in the comments. My comments aren't really working that well, so I'm gonna just keep scrolling. Um, okay, let's see. Oh yeah, Ooh. a lot of sourcing, so many sourcing questions. Guys, this is such a great place to ask these questions of where to source things. There's been a really great um, sharing happening, actually, which is really, really awesome. <clears throat> uh, okay, staging. <clears throat> there are some designers extending their services to other designers. I mean, this really isn't the group for self-promotion and posting, that type of thing, but we'll let it slide since I know that <clears throat> we're all just here to help each other made goods here in Canada. Okay, another sourcing question. Yes, you can get it through uh, LT in Toronto. <clears throat> All right. Okay. Guys, that's all the questions. Unless I've missed something, I want to talk now about the economy. And I just want to remind you that <clears throat> It's not all doom and gloom, um, but there is a softening and there is going to be a change. And I just think that it's important. And this is the same type of conversation I had in 2020. I just really think as designers, we need to get ahead of it and, and just be prepared. And I always say it's better to be prepared for the worst case scenario than to not be prepared and then not know what to do or be scrambling to make money. And I think where the design industry is sort of seeing it happen a little later than other industries because my hair guys I got my hair cut yesterday it's driving me crazy because we were all so slamming busy 2020 end of 2020 2021 right new projects were starting even into 2022 that <clears throat> i think 
a lot of designers are still smoking busy because of the projects that started in the last 18 months. And so because those projects too take a really long time, um, I think sometimes people are, you're, you're in it and you're maybe not looking ahead to where what's coming for the pipeline. If your pipeline is filled for the next two years, ignore what I'm going to say because this is not for you. You're good. You got two years to figure it out. But if your pipeline isn't filled and if you are starting to feel like the leads are slowing down a little bit, you're not getting as many inquiries, you're not getting as many emails or um, phone calls, <clears throat> people aren't jumping on the consultations or consultations aren't turning into projects. I do, first of all, hope that you're tracking. So, cause like we're getting close to the end of the year and on the podcast, I always share kind of what I do for my end of year review. And every year it's a little bit different. So this year I'll re-record mine uh, and I'll share what I'm going to be doing this year. But <clears throat> it's really important to track your leads and the numbers of them. And to look back year over year, month over month, how many leads came in? How many of those leads turned into a discovery call? How many of those discovery calls turned into a consultation? Da -da 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 -da, into a full job, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> the reason you do this is so, well, for a few reasons. One, you wanna understand what types of projects are going through, where people are falling off in your funnel, and also what is your conversion rate? Is your conversion rate going up or is your conversion rate going down? All of a sudden, are you booking more consultations, but they're not turning into projects? These are the data points that you want to look at when you're looking back so that it can help you plan for the year ahead <clears throat> so you understand how many consultations you need to turn something into a full project. Um, because sometimes just because you're getting more inquiries doesn't actually lead to more jobs. I think that as much as I talk about having a core service offering, and I think everyone needs a core service offering, and this is something that I talk about um, to the point of exhaustion in power of process, I do think that when times slow down and the economy starts to correct itself, there's an opportunity to diversify. And I always think it's a good idea to diversify your revenue to have multiple revenue streams without overcomplicating your business. And what that looks like to one designer will be very different for another designer. For me, we have coaching programs. We're gonna have a retreat. We have the design projects. We're working with builders. <clears throat> for some other designers, it could be really just promoting consultations. And maybe you love pillows and you notice your margins are really great in pillows. Maybe you wanna just start selling pillows online. Maybe you want to go after decorating. Maybe the real estate agents is where the best leads are coming from, so you want to focus your energies. It's about getting, I think, a little bit um, scrappy and starting to pay attention to where the money's coming from so that you know where you want to invest in the year ahead to get more projects to bring in more money. Um, <clears throat> I do not have, there's no silver, silver bullet answer to what to do when things are slowing. But I think the most important thing that you can do is be aware and know your numbers. If you haven't listened to that three-part series on my podcast, I highly recommend you go back and listen to it. I interviewed Mary Lee Wright, our operations manager, where she walks uh, you through understanding your numbers, the key metrics in your business, because if you don't know your numbers, it's going to be really hard to focus in on those few areas that are bringing you the biggest dollar. And I do believe that in times where like economic like restraint is happening, the companies that strategically, strategically invest and spend money will be the ones that come out ahead. Whether that is investing in another human for your team, whether that's investing in personal professional development for yourself, whether that is investing in marketing or branding, whatever that looks like to you, because everyone else is holding their breath and slowing down, you will get that forward momentum. Um, 
I would love to have this conversation here. I would love to hear how everyone is doing and, it, and the comments aren't really working today. So maybe what we'll do is we'll, we'll create a post and get people to kind of share like, how are you feeling about the economy? Does it feel like it's slowing down or does it feel like it's full steam ahead and you're gonna be gangbusters in business forever? I would love to know what's going on in your business because it's gonna be different for everybody. And I literally have no comments. If you feel like you want to talk about this, drop a comment right now. If this is a replay, drop a comment right now inside um, the comments below this video, which by the way, this camera Vera, is so terrible. I think it's time to upgrade our camera. It's usually way better. I don't know what's going on. It's so blurry. I don't know. I look blurry to myself. It could be my eyes. No, I don't think it's my eyes. <laughs> I don't think so. Anyways, there you go. Test. Yay, Angela, I got your test. Okay, well, Angela's comments coming through. Oh. Oh, amazing. Angela, yeah. Oh, and one other thing I didn't say before. If you are a POP, we have our closing graduation uh ceremony tomorrow tomorrow at two o'clock on zoom so if you are a pop check your email check your portal check the facebook group we're going to be in there giving you all the love as we wrap up this round of power of process if you are someone who's feels like they missed the boat and needs power of process to kickstart 2023 don't worry it's coming back in the spring we've got you covered just get on our wait list because if you're on our wait list you always are the first to get special offers um and so I think that <clears throat> uh, 2023 is potentially going to be a really good year. Okay, there's people in the comments. Okay, thank goodness there's other people here. <laughs> yes, yeah, I'm scared, but I'm investing in myself to hopefully get that momentum. And I can I just say on a personal note, yes, yeah, from the time that I met you when you did Power Process in the spring till now, like I have seen you grow by leaps and bounds the time that you are investing into your process into your internal documents and into everything you do it is paying off already even if you don't see it because the rest of us can see it so keep doing it it's amazing angela says business is booming over here for design but you're worried about implementation um <clears throat> gada says yes love to talk about this i'm busy now but worried the economy moving forward uh, yeah, see, business is way slow for me in Denver. Um, <clears throat> Angela says, I've had a few clients who are moving ahead more slowly. Um, it's moving ahead more slowly to avoid, sorry, we just got one of those like alert things where it's like emergency alert, but I think it's test. Uh, good, the test works. Testing. Um, stop it. I'm crying. Yes, seats. I needed to hear that. Thank you. I love it. Like if you're slow, that's the time to invest in your professional development because you have the time. And then when things pick up, you are freaking ready to go. And you now have the time to get out there and bring in the leads. Um, I just want to remind everyone that it's all about lead generation. Every business service or product is based on lead generation and sales. If you are not continually nurturing those leads, continuing to market your business, you eventually the referrals can only take you so far. That's how I feel. If you want to grow and scale, referral business is amazing because it keeps you getting those great clients, keeps you in business. But if you want to grow and get bigger and do more faster, then you need to invest in the marketing and you need to get the word out about your offering. You got to get confident in how you price your services, right? Make sure you've got a process set up and then get the word out. <clears throat> okay, this is a really interesting comment. Siren says, I'm not into design, but I have I'm not interior design, but I have a home decor product line, like pillows, throws, and more. And I hear read, I hear excuse me, retailers saying business is real slow. Interesting. So interesting. Uh, Stephanie says also invested in programs and now learning them. Amazing, Stephanie. 
Yeah, I think that that is what we need to take our cues from other industries because interest rates are going up, which means people are hesitant to borrow money to renovate or to move houses. So it depends on your ideal client. Who is your clientele? If your clientele is the type of person who is a uh, middle income bracket and they typically would borrow money from a line of credit to do their renovations or to decorate, then this economy is going to hurt a little bit. If your client is somebody who has the money, has multiple stock holdings and investments and has the cash to spend, it's not going to affect them as much, right? It's definitely pinching the middleman and, and the people who don't really need it but would spend a little extra money because they can, they're gonna start thinking. People are getting laid off. I'm not here to be doomsday, but I think we need to be very aware of the fact that there is a shift happening. We are already in a recession and that I think the design industry is going to really experience it to a certain degree next year. And so I think the more that we can get ourselves prepared for it and set ourselves up for success, the better able we will be to weather that storm. It's all about being prepared, I think. And I think this is a conversation that we can have weekly. Let's talk about it. Let's have these comments. Who's hearing what? Who's still busy? What are you doing to future recession-proof your business in a way? What are you doing so that in 2023, you're still booking consultations? Who are you connecting with? What is your marketing strategy? Start thinking about these things now so that when everyone comes back after the holidays, they're ready to get rolling with you. All right. And we will get through this together, everybody. We will get through this. Um, okay. Thank you for sharing your comments today, uh, for joining the conversation and for showing up for Candid Corner. If you're watching the replay, let me know. Just do a little hashtag replay so I know that you are here. Uh, it's helpful for us to know. And let me know like, if there's something in particular you want me to talk about here. I'm here for it. I am here for it. Yes, he says she loves this topic. Let's talk about this more. Very helpful. Good. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Gotta appreciate your group and willingness to share. Well, thank you for sharing in the group. It is people like you that make this group worthwhile and effective for each other. Uh, we have such an incredible online community. I do feel so grateful every day. Uh, and on that note, I'm going to let you guys go back to your day. All right. That's it, guys. Have a really great day. Okay. So what did you guys think of that? Kind of fun to bring back that conversation, the economy and all things sourcing. I mean, that's what I always loved about Candid Corner. And I definitely am considering doing it again. Um, but you just never know the questions you're going to get. And so I'm able to kind of be there and support you and answer those questions. It's just like being inside Power of Process. Like when you are in Power of Process, I am there. It is live. You can ask questions that are burning that you need an answer to right then and there. So many courses out there are really independent study, do at your own pace. And there's some allure to that, but to be honest, a lot of the time people get overwhelmed. And that's why I developed Power of Process to be a live course. It only comes twice a year. And so I'm able to show up in real time and really serve all of my members and all my students. Um, kind of like we did in this little candid corner. Of course, you can go and watch the unscripted candid corner on our YouTube channel, Rebecca Hay but also it's inside our designer meetups Facebook group with a bunch of other candid corners. So go check out that group. We are there answering questions and really sharing in community with each other. Uh, of course, if you're interested in the power process, go check it out on my website, RebeccaHay.com forward slash process. And that's it folks. I'll see you soon.